I'm not going to name any names in this video because I don't want to reopen any wounds, but this is something that you all need to hear. This is a story that I've never shared publicly. So in 2007, I moved to Orlando, Florida from central Wisconsin. I started producing music in October-ish of 2006, and by 2007, I really wanted to pursue it as a career and knew that I wouldn't have much of a chance or thought that I wouldn't have much of a chance if I stayed in central Wisconsin. A little city that I grew up in with all the surrounding suburbs is about 100,000 people, smack dab in the middle of the state. And my best friend uh, suggested I move to Orlando, Florida because this is where he went to school at Full Sail uh, for music production. So he talked me up. I had never been to Florida before, before I actually moved here. So I packed up my Nissan Ultima. I had $3,400 uh, that I had saved up from about, I don't know, three or four months worth of savings. And I sold a motorcycle and all that stuff and I moved down to Orlando, Florida and got my feet planted, I guess. I, I got a job, I got an apartment, met some people, uh, and I was just grinding hard on MySpace, uh, and then later than that, YouTube, and then later than that came SoundClick. So fast forward a little bit to 2009, 2010. I was, uh, I guess what you would consider crushing it on SoundClick. Um, I was consistently in the top 10 uh, due to consistent posts, building buzz on other social platforms and doing some paid marketing on the site once I kind of cracked the code and figured out the formula. And after that, uh, I started buzzing here in Orlando a little bit. I, have a, I had a lot of local Orlando uh, artists hitting me up, some, some producers. Uh, shout out to all my Orlando producers and artists. They contacted me wanting to work with me. So I was a little wet behind the ears, as the uh, old folks say. I was new to the, new to the game. I had just got my feet a little bit wet and I was just starting to make money uh, in about 2010 from SoundClick. This is when I started making 1,500, three grand, five grand, 10 grand a month on, online from the comfort of my home in my pajama pants selling beats online to artists from around the world. So uh, in 2009, 2010, I was introduced to an Orlando artist. I'm not going to name any names in this video because I don't want to reopen any wounds, but this is something that you all need to hear. This is a story that I've never shared publicly. Um, and the other ones that I've been sharing have been going well and I've been enjoying that. So uh, I'm going to continue with this one. Now this per, uh, particular artist uh, in the Orlando area still to this day happens to be one of the most talented artists I've ever met in person. One of the most talented artists uh, that has all this unlimited potential um, just to kill it. He unbelievable talent. So we start working together and up front he hypes me up, tells me that I'm the best thing since sliced bread, which I've always kind of taken for as a grain of, you know, with a grain of salt because as creators, I don't know if you suffer from this, but even to this day, sometimes you deal with a little bit of self-doubt, right? You, you don't think you're, you're quite as great as uh, everybody might say you are at times because uh, once you start believing it, can go bad if you let it. So anyway, I was working with this artist and he approached me and he said, look, I want to work with you exclusively on a new project I have. It's going to be an album. We're going to get it up on iTunes. We're going to get it up on, I think at the time it was like Pandora was the big player in town. Uh, we're going to pay for videos and all this good stuff. And I was really excited, right? He had taken a couple of my sound click beats and played them for me. And he had, he had made some incredible uh, songs out of these. And he paid for leases, basic leases uh, at that time. And I was extremely excited to work with him. So, you know, but six months later, you know, I've sent him maybe eight or nine different beats, maybe 10, uh, take that back. I've sent him a whole lot, but he's chosen eight or nine or maybe 10 beats to work on to get on this album. Now the agreement in the beginning was, uh, Adam, we're putting this out. We have distribution. We're going to be selling it on iTunes, like I said, and we're going to break you off with this much of a percent based on all the sales. Now, just getting started, I trusted him, uh, which I'm a pretty trusting person, uh, not as naive as I was back then. But I thought, okay, you know what? This artist is incredibly talented. I'm excited about this project, and it's going to be something that I'll be proud of. It's going to be music that I actually enjoy. This guy's going to do... Uh, do with my beats some incredible things and I'm just looking forward to being a part of that. So this whole album launch, you know, uh, plan was in the works. We had gone to some radio interviews. Um, I had been his guest, I guess, and, and, you know, he really made me feel like I was part of the team, right? Um, and, and to give you guys a little bit more information on what I'm talking about here is the team consisted of him, his manager, and then a couple other artists and producers that he was really close with that I became, you know, buddies with, not close with, but, you know, acquaintances with, which were all good people. Now, 
there was a couple times that I went out uh, to lunch or I met up with his manager because his manager really ran the show. His manager uh, booked all the performances. His manager, essentially his manager was perceived as like his family, which uh, for all intents and purposes, that's how a lot of managers are in this music industry. I know a lot of you artists and a lot of you producers are very, very close with the people that you roll with, uh, as am I. So I totally got it, right? And a few different things that were pushed you know, when we were building this relationship was we really uh, like that you're a young up and coming producer. We want to get, you know, on your beats. We want to get your name and your tag on our beats or on our, our songs before you blow up. You know, everything was like kind of about pumping my head up uh, with all this hype. Now, month after month passed and we were working on so many different projects. I think at one point we probably had 15 projects in the works uh, for this project, for this album. And now, at that point, I wasn't exclusively producing this thing anymore. There was a few different beats from, I think his manager actually made beats too or something. And there was a couple other beats on the project, but it's no big deal, right? If I have nine or 10 beats out of 12 or 14 songs, I'm absolutely, <laughs> that's that's a pretty good project. So I was excited. He, started, he starts releasing singles. Now I'm meeting up with his manager and his manager is like um, uh, a very large uh, African-American man. Um, Really, really funny. Really funny. He had a great personality, but one of the things that he always brought up with me was he loved the fact that there was so much diversity on this project. He's like, man, for a white guy, you got soul. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, this is several years ago, but, you know, for a white boy, you have so much soul and you understand the, the culture, which... Honestly, I'm from central Wisconsin. How much can I really understand the culture uh, besides understanding hip hop, knowing the music? I absolutely love it. Now, I'm not talking for all Wisconsinites, but for me, I grew up listening to classic rock. I grew up listening to polka and country music, pop music. Uh, one of my first albums, honestly, my first CD ever was uh, a Weird Al CD followed by a P. Diddy and the Family or Puff Daddy and the Family uh, CD. And then I could share some of those. I actually, right off camera, I have the books that I used to carry around in my car, you know, the CD books that carried like 96 discs. Uh, I should share those with you guys sometime. If you have, if you want to see what I listened to back in the day when people bought CDs more traditionally, leave a comment in the comments below. I'm getting to a point here, so I hope you're still with me. So we're working on this project and then one day we're, we get together at a radio station, we do like a little radio thing. I, I, I don't I don't even remember if I got on radio at all, but I was there for support and it was always fun. It was th these group of people were always really fun to be with. Um, and it's something, I'm an introvert. You guys might not think that because I'm in front of the camera all the time, but I'm here in a room alone. I'm an introvert, more like an ambivert. And what an ambivert is, is like an introvert that once he warms up to the crowd, once he warms up or knows the people around him, really warms up, I keep saying warms up, but really opens up. And, become, and can become the life of the party, almost like a, an introvert with a hidden extrovert inside that's, you know, gets comfortable and, and, and really breaks out of that shy, nervous shell. So that's me. So I'm out at these, these different events with these guys, and not a whole lot. I don't want to make it seem like we did a whole lot of stuff. This was only maybe a half a dozen times, if that, uh, really here in, in the Orlando area. I was super excited. I got to the point where I, I was making good money on SoundClick and, and the other avenues that I was selling my music. Uh, I, I owned a website called myinstrumentals.com with a great team of artists so, or a great team of producers over there. We were making some pretty good money. Um, money was coming in from adamivy.com, which I think at the time was linked to my SoundClick page. Anyway, you guys don't need to know about that, but I was making money, so I wasn't too worried about getting paid from this artist. So one day he tells me, uh, Adam, we've decided that there's so much good music and we've been working on this for so long that we're just going to put it out as a free mixtape. Going to put it out there. We have distribution and distribution, meaning they had made some relationships with uh, radio DJs in the area, maybe some in Atlanta and, and, and maybe Miami or wherever, Florida, Georgia, uh, not really expansive, expansive. You get what I'm saying. It's not like huge regionally, uh, but enough to get on radio and whatever. So that was disheartening. That was kind of the first red flag that I didn't identify as a red flag. They had told me that they were going to release it and I was going to get a cut of that money. That's why I sent so many exclusive beats to them to begin with. Now, uh, complete transparency. I never signed any contracts with them. Uh, I did for the original leases that he had leased. So everything was a handshake and a, and a promise, right? Like a lot of the situations that I know a lot of you guys deal with. Uh, and this is where the, t the story kind of turns. So 
he had put out this project. I was incredibly proud of it. And he wanted to start working on the next one. The, the, this project had been done for some months. He was doing the promotion stuff and he wanted to work, start working on the next album. Now, as always, he hyped me up. He knew that I was a, a people pleaser per se, in the sense of I really like bringing joy to people's lives. I really like, I get fulfillment helping other people uh, achieve their dreams and, and pursue um, progress, uh, pursue progress and, and find successes based on their art. I've always been uh, an artistic type of guy. Is, you know, I, I really appreciate art in every sense, uh, music or traditional art, sketching, um, all that stuff. I'm, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to that. So we start working on this, this other project. And at that point, this is like a year has gone by, maybe a little bit more. And I've kind of established a business backbone and I've made money online and I've dealt with a whole lot of artists that will promise money tomorrow for a beat today. They're like the hamburg burglar. They're like the beat burglar, right? We need to make a cartoon about that, the beat burglar. I'll gladly pay you tomorrow for a beat today. Uh, and that's really what it started turning out to be. It's like, hey, send me this, send me that, send me this, send me that. And so I was a little bit smarter. You, you guys might think I was a little bit uh, cynical, which I was. I started sending them tag beats, heavily tagged beats. And he was like, yo, this is really hot. Send me the untagged beat. So I'd send him one just with my tag in the beginning. And then he started asking me to remove that tag. Now, at that point, I wasn't really comfortable with that. And I said, look, this is what it is. I'm making a living on music. I'm making a living with my music online and I'm paying my bills. I'm buying the food that I eat with. I'm, I'm traveling. I'm you know, sending money to family to help out uh, here and there. That didn't happen a whole lot, but uh, you get what I'm saying. If, if needed, if I had a friend that was in need, I would throw him a little bit of money. I wasn't making a ton, but making enough to be able to contribute. Now, this pissed him off, just putting it out there, just being completely honest. This pissed him off. He's like, yo, how are you going to do me like that? Uh, you know, we've been working together. I thought we were boys. I thought we were family. And this is how it always happens. As a producer, you deal with artists that will take advantage of you. I'm not saying all artists. A lot of you guys are great artists. A lot of you guys hit me up and, and are offering to donate money to my PayPal account. And I'm just like, what the, just because you in, have gotten value from the videos or whatever, even if you're not a coaching client of mine. But, uh, you know, get back to my story. He started getting upset. So, you know, I was like, you know what? I don't want any bad blood here. I sent him a beat or two with no tags at all. I'm like, dude, just do your thing. I want to hear these. I want to hear these out. Now, side note. These beats that I was sharing with him, these beats that I was sending him were exclusives. I wasn't sending these for shopping around labels. I wasn't sending these to my A&R contacts. I wasn't uploading these to SoundClick or YouTube, any of that. This guy heard the beat and got to decide whether he wanted it or not. Now, like I said, I was sending him tag beats at that point. And finally, he wanted four beats. Now, being, or not being, but feeling as if I was kind of like his friend, I said, look, uh, I'm gonna need I don't even remember what it was. I think I was charging $34 or $25 or something per lease. And I said, look, I'm going to let you have like the highest level lease on these beats. I'm going to put them up on SoundClick in a few months. I'll let you have some time with them, but I'm going to put them up for, for, for lease. So other people can have a, a go at them because you're not paying me. Um, excuse me. Video indigestion coming back once again. Now, I offered him like an incredible deal. It was like 50 bucks or something like that for four beats for leases. He was like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. I got you. I got you. Just send it now. I'm going to send you the money Thursday or whatever, you know, a few days from then. I'm like, okay, whatever. I trusted the guy, right? He had, uh, he had uh, met me out and he had bought me lunch a couple times. I'm like, cool. You know, this guy's a good guy. He's, and to this day, I have no bad blood whatsoever with the artist. Um, none. I'm just need to share this. This, this is it's getting juicy. It's going to get real juicy. So a few months later, a few months pass, and he's working on some new music. I'm getting really busy fulfilling orders on SoundClick and really, really, really pushing because my brother came down with a heart condition. And it bothered me so bad that I was here in Orlando, Florida, and he was up in central Wisconsin, um, that I decided to move back to central Wisconsin. Uh, it was like very abrupt. I was like, look, I'm moving. I told, the, I was living in an apartment. I told the apartment complex, look, I'm moving in, I think it was like 60 days or 30 days or something. I said, I'll pay to break my lease, whatever. I need to get out of here. I need to get back up to Wisconsin. I gave away half my stuff and, and just packed up a Dodge Magnum that I had at the time, which has been in other videos uh, several years ago that you guys can go check out. Packed it up with everything. You know what? If you go back on my channel 
and watch a video. It's called uh, "We're All Riley, R- Rallied Up" or something. It was it was about my venture from uh, Florida back up to Wisconsin. I, I did like a vlog style video or maybe a few of them. Um, anyway, back to the story. So I decided I needed to move back to Wisconsin. So uh, got rid of everything, said my goodbyes, and moved back up. Now, I moved back in with a buddy of mine who I had been living with when I was a teenager up there, um, like 19 or 20 or whatever. Right before I started making music, I was living with him. Um, and I actually, I lived with him last before I moved to Orlando, if you're still following the story. Moved up there, was working on music, making a boatload of money. I'm talking, uh, this is when I really started making over $10,000 a month with music. And, and at, at that point, I thought it was all the money in the world. I'm like, man, I'm like making more money than anyone in my family has ever made. This is insane. I was going out to eat like three times a day. Uh, and even though I'm making good money now, it's uh, don't go out three times a day if you want to hold on to that money. I need to do I need to do a full video on investing your money because a lot of you guys uh, are addicted to um, eating out like I am. Anyway. So I'm up there and I get a call from this guy's manager. He's like, yo, Adam, I just want to say thank you for all the hard work that you've put in on these projects. Uh, I want your address. I have something to send you. I'm like, cool. You know, this is, this is going to be awesome. Uh, what, you know, I don't know if it's a t-shirt or, or my money because he still hadn't paid me my money. I'm like, cool. And I had kept in contact with the artist, not as much as I had in the past. He was, I think he was kind of trying to change his sound. Um, he was going more towards like sample based music at that time. Um, you know, the real boom bap stuff. And at the time I wasn't making any of that because it wasn't selling and I was just making what I had needed to make to, uh, make my money. You know, I knew what sold, I knew the formula and that was before I really retook my artistic uh, expression and, and realized that it's not about the money. It's not about chasing leases. Another different videos topic. So a few weeks go by and I get a package and I'm like excited. I'm like, okay, I know who this is from because it's addressed from that individual. And I open it up and guess what? It's a, it's a plaque. It's like, uh, you ever get a fourth place trophy or see a fourth place award? You don't get a trophy for fourth place. You get like a plaque. It was like this big. So maybe, uh, I just flexed a little bit, un- unintentional. Um, I don't know, maybe a foot by six inches, something like that. It was like this big, I don't know. And what it had on it was a black plaque and it had a, um, what do you want to call it? Like a metal embossed, essentially like a metal sticker on it with the cover of the mixtape that the artist had released. And it said, uh, uh, this plaque is in, uh, as, as a thank you to Adam Ivy for the work on this project by this artist, whatever, uh, in 2000, whatever it was, 2010. And I'm like, okay, cool. And for some reason it hit me on the wrong day. I think I had worked with so many different artists that have kind of had fallen through broken promises. At that point, I wasn't in a good mood. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I look at this plaque and as an analytical type person, I look at it and looking straight on the, the, the plaque is straight, obviously, cause it's the wood frame, but the part that's stuck on is at a noticeable angle, right? So I hang it on the wall and he, uh, I hang it on the wall and even straight, it's looks like it's crooked. And then when I tilt the crooked, the wood parts crooked or when I tilt the crooked so that the regular part, the, the metal, the actual graphic on it is straight. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. So I text message the individual. I'm like, yo, I just want to let you know that I received the plaque. I got the plaque. Uh, and I, I don't want, God, some, this is, this is a ridiculous story. I said, I got the plaque. Um, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. I'm really glad that I got to work on the project. Uh, but a side note, I'm, did you, um, see these plaques before you sent them out? Because this plaque is crooked. I sent them a photo. This is back in the days of like iPhone three or four. It was like, old. I remember my little teeny tiny phone. And I take a picture of it and I send it to him. And I said, I don't know if you want me to send this back, if you have a different one or whatever. Now I'm not trying to be rude, but if I spent money on plaques for producers and artists that I work with, even to this day, I would damn sure make sure that those things were straight. I would double check them. It's what, it's what you call quality control. I wasn't trying to start anything with this individual, but I did. I think I had mentioned something in there also about the fact that his artist owed me money. I was like, Hey, I'm not sure, uh, if, if you're, you know, in contact with this, you know, artist individual, I'm not sure if you've talked about this. Um, but he's owed me money for like two months now. All I need is this. If you just want to send it over, I could send you a PayPal invoice. 
Well, what happened next is that he called me and we've always, he's, we've always been cool. We have always been cool. I've never had one bad word to say about this individual. And he calls me. I pick up the phone. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? This guy starts fucking yelling at me. Like he's my dad. Like he's my dad and he just saw me steal something from someone at church. He is yelling. Like, I'm not going to do it because it's gross. It sounded like he had the fucking phone in his mouth, like touching his, his, the back of his throat. I couldn't make out half of what he was saying. I'm like, what's going on? All I heard is you fucking white twerp. Uh, don't come back to Orlando. He calmed down a little bit and, and proceeded to threaten my mother's life, which I don't think I've ever even told her about because it's like none are, not, they're not going to come up to Wisconsin to kill my mom over 40 or 50 bucks. But, well, never know in this world. But he's like, you don't ever come back to Orlando. We're going to find you. You don't know who you're fucking with, blah, blah, blah. And I was like calm. Just I was, I was honestly in shock. I was just like, because I couldn't understand half the crap this guy was saying. And I'm like, are you done? I think I said it just like that because it, it really made him mad. He started yelling again, are you done? And that's that's what happened. I said, are you done? And then he threatened to kill my mom, hunt down, hunt down my mom uh, and kill her. And then uh, he, I don't know who I'm fucking with. If I ever come back to Orlando, he would find me and stomp me and send the goons, send the... And this guy is a man of the Lord. This guy would always say, oh, God bless you, brother. God bless you, oh... And I'm not going to judge his character any further than I already have. Uh, besides the fact that this guy's a great A piece of shit, and fuck you if, if you're watching this. You know, I forgive you, but fuck you, you're a cocksucker. Anyway, I don't mean that in like a homophobic type of way either. That's just like, I probably need to clean up my insults, but it could be a whole lot worse. This guy totally stagnated his artist growth. This is where I'm getting with the video, and I'm glad... Uh, those of you who have made it this far, I have a point to this video besides the fact that someone threatened my life. And, and to be honest, there's two other artists in my career that have threatened my life. And I consider myself pretty fortunate because I've heard of some pretty messed up stuff, including someone getting shot in the studio, which uh, this is one reason that I do most of my work from the comfort of my own home online, on the internet, on the interwebs. One thing great about online business is that you're way more safe and Pissed off people can just yell at you via email and voice message. I like it that way. Anyway, this this artist trusted his manager so much that he had no idea what happened. In fact, this artist texted me, called me. He's like, what's going on? I told him what's going on. He's like, man, I don't know what. He didn't, excuse me, he never apologized for what his manager did because they were that close to where he almost didn't believe what I was telling him. After that day, I never talked to him again. I might have I might have had a couple uh, inter. Uh, Alterca not altercations, interactions with him online in the sense of like, uh, you know, maybe various social like likes and stuff like that. Or I'd, I'd share some of his content because uh, he ended up releasing a couple songs that so ironic, right? He, he the guy, his manager threatens my life and then he releases a couple songs that I produced after the fact. But anyway, l look, look. I have nothing against, at this point, this is this is years later, this is water under the bridge. And I know I said some words, I had some words for this individual, but, uh, and if he's watching, if somehow this gets back to him, I hope you can understand uh, my little bit of resentment for you threatening myself and my sweet little mother. I'm going to put a photo up on the screen of my, myself and my mother having a good time. Because that's my mom. You don't, don't threaten my mom. My mom's a good woman. Anyway. That's like my favorite picture of my mom and I as well. Side note, she's probably going to get kind of upset that I posted that. But mom, I love you. I had to share that with my people, my channel family. You're the mother of the channel family. Anyway, guys, this manager shot all of this artist's music videos. He did all of the PR. He did all of the, uh, for instance, I offered to do a video for this individual, this artist, this super talented artist. And his manager said no essentially like needed to be in control of everything living vicariously through the artists and so many managers do this so if you're an artist if you're a producer don't just latch on to your brother because he believes in you and he he's good at social media you don't need a manager until you hit a certain level and if you want me to do a video i've mentioned this before if you want me to do a video fully breaking down the pros and cons of having a legitimate manager not just some fuck face that you call your manager uh, i will do that and please leave that in the comments below you never have the right to threaten someone's life, especially when you are in the wrong, when you owe them money. 
This isn't uh, Goodfellas. This isn't Donnie Brasco. This isn't that type of world. I don't care who you fuck with. I don't care what circles you roll with. Life isn't that uh, simple where you can just threaten someone's existence, someone's life over a business transaction that you owe them money or you were upset, you felt disrespected without letting them plead their case or without letting them clarify things, especially if you didn't have any bad blood prior to that. Now, I think what had happened low-key is they saw me, and I'm not, this isn't a narcissistic thing, this is just kind of the order of events. They saw me getting a big name uh, in that realm uh, online. They saw me uh, taking care of my business and somebody that takes advantage of you will get very upset when they understand that you're starting to process the fact that, that you're a business person, when you're starting to respect yourself enough to charge. When you're getting that backbone developed, and I, I mean that in almost like an embryotic way where you're a baby and then you grow and you get this backbone and all of a sudden you're gristled and you turn into an old man that looks like Tommy Lee Jones or Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman's a little cooler, but they're both badasses. Or Clint Eastwood. I just watched a movie with Clint Eastwood. He never opens his mouth. That's how he talks in the whole movie. Anyway, what I'm getting at is people, once you become an entrepreneur and really start to understand your worth and understand your value and your charge, your, the one thing that a lot of you guys are afraid of doing is asking for money. You're afraid to kind of be a bill collector and say, no, 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 my product is worth something. You might not be able to see it, but it's a digital good, no different than uh, you know, photographer selling his art or selling his work. I am an artist and I'm selling my music and this is how the transactions work. This individual threatened me, and I'm not gonna beat a dead horse, but this far beyond the damage that he did with our little relationship or whatever, he did to his artist, who I believe he's probably still managing to this day. This artist is an incredible, incredible talent. He's still, I think he's changed his name two or three times as his uh, stage name. But I wish that he would be able to see what's actually going on. Because there's so many opportunities that his manager wouldn't let him do. And when you trust your manager, you think that they're looking out for you. They think that you think that they're looking out for your best interest. When in reality, they're just trying to cling on to the train and the momentum that you are building as an artist. Because they want to live through the hype. Like I said, a good manager won't do that. A good manager will look out for you. A good manager is trying to get you as much money and opportunity, even if you're not, if even if he's not or she's not or they're not in the limelight. In the comments, I want to hear if you've ever had a shady altercation with an artist, a producer, maybe a writer, maybe a an A and R, maybe a, a, a what am I looking for? A, a studio owner. I've heard some some crazy stories. I want to hear about those in the comments section below. I also want to hear about if you've been considering a manager or if you yourself are currently managed or maybe you yourself are a manager. I want to hear about that in the comments below. I'm not going to let somebody threaten me and try to deplenish my wor de deplete my worth or deplenish, deplenish. That's not a word. I'm making up words here on the channel, but you know what I mean. I'm not going to let somebody bring me down. I know my worth. Guess what? I moved back to Orlando. I'm not concerned with this individual because I know that he spoke out of a hatred uh, for something that was going on in his life. You know, I wish him the best. I wish that artist the best. And maybe at this point, you know, eight years later, nine years later, uh, maybe seven years later, maybe they've come to a different, a different point in their career, a different understanding. Maybe they've come to a different mindset when it comes to uh, getting that artist to work, getting that artist set up on a business uh, and marketing path that would really elevate him. So... Don't wish any bad blood on anyone. I think that we can all succeed if we just support each other and look at options and look at opportunities that we haven't before. Did you know you could sell music on Etsy? Maybe I blew some of your guys' mind. That was just a tidbit. You could sell music on Etsy, but I bet you you're not because nobody is. But you can't. Okay, so if you've made it this far in the video, if you're still with me, God bless you and thank you so much because I know this video is way longer than usual, but I wanted to paint the picture and I needed to run you guys through the entire story start to finish. Hopefully my pacing was entertaining enough to where you're still with me. If you enjoyed this content, as always, please smash that thumbs up button. I think I failed to mention that before. Please smash that thumbs up button. It means a lot to me. Uh, and until next time, guys, you can find me at AdamIvy.com.